We're gonna react to Lordana Toma in weightlifting and we're gonna start right now. So I got some really cool questions about what can we do when a young athlete tests positive? And so what does that have to do with Toma, okay? One of these questions came about is, what do you do in someone like Toma's case? So Toma actually tested positive for stenozolol in 2014. Now, she's 26 years old, so 2014, she was 19. And the question comes about because somebody gets popped. When I was talking about trying to completely alter the IWF or implode the IWF so we can actually improve weightlifting, the question came about is, what do you do with somebody like Toma who was on drugs at an early age? So she was taking Winstrol when she was probably 17, 18 years old. And you've got to sit there and be, all right, is this really a 17 or an 18 year old's decision? Or is she being influenced by her now? National governing body is she being influenced by her coach she's being pressured as an athlete at a very early age to take an anabolic agent and the reason this came up is because I said if you test positive for an anabolic it's a once and done deal you should be completely wiped out now I don't have a really good response for that question I think if there's an age limit that you can determine like okay you're 20 and under and you get popped your NGB should be put into a band pool or the coaches should be put into this band pool and that might be the case here with Tony because now she has come back and she won the 17 world title. She has a couple bronze medals as well at the world championships and she has been clean by all accounts. When she won worlds, it was in Anaheim. So that's clearly, you know, under the USADA testing pool. So she was clean. So I think what we can learn from Toma is deeper than just that issue. I think that issue is something that is a administrative problem here but hey guys sorry to interrupt this video but if you want a peek into our sample program and what our system of training looks like click on the link down below you can go to garagestrength.com and you'll enter your email and get a free sample workout that you can take to the gym and improve your weightlifting today what i like with toma is one it's her intensity she comes after every single weight and that's what we're going to start to see here is like she comes out she opens up at 107 kilos here at the 2019 world championships and I was fortunate enough that I could see her training. Like we would, we were in the back room, um, in the training hall, able to see her actually get after it. And one thing now is she goes from 107 to 112. Okay, and that's just a huge jump, an enormous jump. And this is when when we had traveled to 2019 Worlds. When I was there with with Jordan Wissinger, the travel was tough. It, it, hours upon hours like a full day of travel and even though she's coming from romania it's still a long day of travel and then she comes in the back room and she just starts smashing stuff but she takes 12 comes out after 12 i think this was what teen okay so she misses 16 that was going to be the world record at the time so what we can see from that technical perspective is she, she's got really long legs she is a little taller you know for the 63 64 class but we'll start to see here some progressions. In 2019, she jerked horribly. And she's always sort of had this weird foot issue with her right foot. And I think a lot of people, they they have pointed it out um, in inside of the actual weightlifting world. People have discussed what's her right leg doing. And later, you know, into 2021, we start to see that right leg issue sort of disappear. So she, she makes some good technical corrections, but it still comes out in her snatch. And I think that a lot of coaches miss things like this. They miss how does the, the split jerk, the, the jerk position affect the snatch and the actual pull of that snatch. But going back to the positive technique, and you can see right there on that, what is that, 122? On that 22 or 26, I'm so bad with women's women's weights. I'm so pathetic. That was 27. Wow, Dane, you're an idiot. 27. Uh, now she's got 28 on the bar. You can see how slow that right foot is to get forward. And this is the benefit of all things gym. This is the benefit of, and speak of all things gym, they show up in, into this reaction with the, the video. And I think that's Nessie behind her, 76K Olympic champ, checking her out, watching that technique. But watch you know all things gym watch hook grip you can see you know watch 1k you can see movement in such high frame rate in slow mo that you can start to see little quirks and you can start to see really intricate details around a technique and that's a big thing with toma 
her snatch, you know, I was fortunate in Lima, Peru to watch her, her warm up and, and train. I was same thing here in uh, Pattaya is that I was able to watch her train. I wasn't at this specific session because I was trying to actually sleep, but you can see that I've always felt like athletes extend their hips, then they extend their knees. Okay. And that it's a very quick reaction, but it's the knees come back off the floor. The knees reciprocate under the bar and then the hips extend and then the knees extend. Okay. To keep it vertical. And you can see in Toma's movement, you can see how that actually happens. You can see that knee position off the floor, similar to Quo, where the knees come back. So the bar stays really, really tight to below the knee. So right here, you can see on lift off, knees clear back to where their shin angles vertical, right there, vertical. Knees come under, 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 reciprocating. And then the hips extend here, hip, knee, hip, knee. Now, one issue I think in 19 is that Tomo tended to get behind the bar a bit much with her chest. She sort of, she didn't hold hip flexion as long as she could. And she would come behind the bar a little bit. And then that's where I think that, you know, it's a 116K snatch. That's where that miss came into play. But what we can learn from the technique is also, you know, repeatability, aggressiveness. She's always aggressive and her limb length. She is a longer lifter. She's not extremely tall, but she's tall for the weight class. She's definitely taller than most other 64s in, 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 in her, her weight class. So if we can learn, you've got to still squat a lot, even if you do have longer limbs. So she's got a really, really big squat and you have to execute with technical precision. It can't just be go in and, uh, you know, just go in and flail all over the place. So this is 112. This is what she actually hit her second attempt in this competition in 2019. Go to high speed and, and you know, at her lighter weight, she does jump her feet a little bit more, but her feet tend to be flat footed a lot longer. And that's a cue I love to use that I stole from Brian Seacrest, a flat footed jump. Think of the snatch as a flat footed jump. Knees back, knees back right there. Vertical shins, knees under, knees under. And you can see her hips coming under while her knees are flexing. Now knees extend after the hips extend. So a lot of people will say the hips had the speed, the hips had the speed. The hips are the last thing that happens. No, the hips happen, then the knees extend to stay more vertical on the finish. So I think that's a real big secret that we can learn from these videos from Quo, from Toma, in the slow-mo, from All Things Gym, from Hook Grip that we couldn't see before because we didn't have technology and we didn't have people that were spreading the, the interest of the sport like these guys do. Slight press out on that right side, but who cares? <laughs> 116. So the bar comes back, bar comes back because the knees clear back, the bar comes back, right? Knees are back, knees are back. Now the knees come under, knees come under, flat footed, flat footed, flat footed. Now heels pop right at the hip, heels pop right at the hip, hips extend, knees extend, slides the feet out into that good strong catch. She is a little jumpier on her right foot. Okay, so that's important. Also on this snatch, you can see that right foot's back a little. We're gonna come back to that because that's an area where a lot of coaches need to pay attention and, and pay attention to footwork peculiarities in your athlete dependent upon other movements. You know, knees position, knees are great. Knees come under and that's just knees back, knees forward. Knees back, knees forward, hips, knees. Knees back, knees forward, hips, knees. I, I, I love watching her technique because that it's so apparent and it's so apparent on what the knee reciprocation is because she's longer legged. Check out parabolic periodization. We go over all this stuff with technique uh, when we're talking about actual weightlifting. Now, right foot planted, 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 and it's like a little dance there. Okay, and that's what's gonna come back to get her. So a lot of people, I don't wanna use negative terms, but a lot of blowhards would say, oh, you're just talking trash on Toma's technique because, you know, because she's one of the best. So you're just being overly critical. Well, no, like that's a technical inefficiency and it did come back to get her on the stage and the best in the world have little things that they can critique and improve upon. So what I like here on this session is I think she went heavy and then did drop sets and came back up just a little bit, but still we've got to think about, you know, what would she do to get that right foot moving more? I was, uh, uh, for this session, I was in the back or I was in that training session here. This is where she squatted quite a bit. And that's another aspect is that watching, watching someone of her length squat heavy is impressive. Now, 2021. So two years later, does she clean up her technique? I think so. I think when you're looking at the progress and young lifters, 
She's 26 now, 27 years old, and she's still making technique improvements. She's still making technical improvements to then lead to better performance out on the platform, and she's still super, super intense. So that's her opener, what's that, 106? No, that's 101, dang gosh, you're an idiot. So now she's got, so she went from seven to 14, I think. And you can see there, pay attention to that right side. Even on the pull, the right side lags a little and then she bails a little on that right leg. Watch this in the slow motion. Okay, this is key. When that lead foot in the jerk, so she goes from seven to 14. So she took a six kilo jump and a seven kilo jump. That takes balls, that's crazy, that's awesome. Um, but watch when you see someone who jerks, okay? This almost always happens where they rotate to the side that they lead in the jerk. They'll rotate that way in the snatch. So you can watch her foot, her right leg, bails a little bit in the snatch, and she's a little laggy on that pull. But her technical positions outside of that are better. You can even see her right foot grounds a little bit later. You can see there that right bails a little early. And it's back behind. Here you go, right bails a little. So it's like, how can you look at that as a coach and your own athletes and say, all right, we've got to make sure that, you know, you could do some no feet work, you can do some uh, some glute work. I, th I think it does relate to some of the hip adductors and abductors as well. Um, her right foot still is a little slow, but I think it's faster in her split. And it's just being aware of those things so that when you're cueing your athlete, because even in her clean, she bails with that right foot a little bit but she is faster in moving that right. It's not boom, boom, it's ba boom. You can see from that top position, it's a lot quicker than it had been. That's the thing, she came back, I think in Rome she had a 136. So over the last year and a half, as she's gotten older, and you're gonna see this with a lot of women um, and a lot of lighter men, is that as they age, as they get over 25, 26, 27, their clean and jerk really starts to grow quite a bit because they can handle that volume a lot more at the, at the higher weights. Their, their snatch work is pretty much imprinted and now they can start to push their strength a little bit more. Still a little bit forward in that split from that slow right, and that's the other thing. If the jerk is forward, it's typically because your right foot is slow coming forward. But She's got really good knee flexion in the split position and really good ankle flexion in that back leg so that she can get down and lower those hips. Good, strong, clean. And there's where that, that slower right leg comes into play. You know, five for six, beast lift. And here's where you're gonna be able to see a little bit with that right leg coming back. Just a little slow, just a little bit. Could be like drive that a little bit longer. You know, again, this is serious, serious weight. What's that, 37, I believe, that was on the bar. I think the biggest things that we can learn from Toma are, one, bring up that positive band and say, what are NGBs doing? Why are we influencing 17, 18 year old athletes to try and take anabolics? Two, learn from her technique, because I think that's the most important aspect is that if you have a long legged lifter, you still have to get them to squat well, but they've got to understand how to move properly. Everybody does, not just long leggers. If we can watch Toma's knees come back, if we watch them come under, uh, she stays flat footed for a very long period of time. She keeps that hip flexion for a while. And if she can keep that hip flexion for a while, it loads up her hamstrings. She's got long her legs so her hamstrings are extremely powerful and then she uses them on the finish to accelerate that finish it goes hips knees you've got to take technical precision and technical work over long periods of time it's really really important you can see she's making technical progress and she's 26 27 years old now and she's still getting better and that's what the sport is about it's about constant progress constantly digging in and becoming a better athlete so if you want more content around weightlifting Click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.